Welcome everyone. How are we doing? Back at it with my friend Alex Albrand is in the house. We are currently at Funnel Hackers Live 2023. We are in day two, mm -hmm. day three, day two. Yeah, I don't even know. The time has been flying. This event is a serious type of an event. You have to come ready to be poured into. It's it's a a very draining type of an event. So I recommend come with plenty of water, snacks, you know, map out the, the restaurants you mm -hmm. want to hit in advance. You got to be efficient with the breaks. My goodness, I've just been getting my mind blown. Some of the speakers like Perry Belcher, Joko, the Navy SEAL, and Russell himself mm -hmm. is really good. I've been I've enjoyed some of the things that Russell uh, Runson talked about, something called the linchpin model. And I've been incorporating that how I'm going to bring that back into my own business. But what I want to discuss today is really picking up where Alex and I left off a couple months back. We mm -hmm. did a, a nice little gathering together and we just kind of went in depth into each other's businesses, really the progress, how, how we've been going. And I feel like if we keep doing this ongoing, we can really document our success, document our mistakes, mm -hmm. our failures. And that really can give our audience some really good, you know, perspective that, you know, we're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to screw up. Uh, only difference is we're in the public mm. when we mess up. Yeah. So versus others that are watching at home that maybe don't have a, a public figure yet, you don't have a following. When you mess up, you get to do it behind closed doors, mm. right? But when you decide to walk in your purpose and be an impactful, abundant cheerful giver mm. to others you're you're bound to what help a lot of people but also you're more vulnerable to make public mistakes right mm. so that's one of the things i want to talk about is the failures i mm. think it's important let's 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 hash it out let's talk about what are, what are some things that we've messed up on and then two let's talk a little bit about this event that we're at and why are you suited up? Like what's going on? And I'm kind of like in my own kind of merch gear going on a little bit dressed down. So you we, don't we see me in a that. suit. Anybody that's watching this, that's seen me in any video. I'm wearing like a long sleeve basic yeah. t-shirt, you know? Yeah. And so I actually just walked the stage tonight to get the two comma club award from Russell Brunson for technically it's making seven figures with one sales funnel in a 12 month period. And so I did that in 2022. And so right now it's mid 2023. And I walked the stage just maybe an hour ago, um, got the award. Denzel took a nice video of it. I got some pictures coming too. And I think it's good that we're making this video now because we both started with each other when we were at zero, if not in the negative. Literally negative for me. Right. I, I was at basically zero. Basically it's not, it's zero. Not like you're, 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 you were going off savings, like whatever you had in savings. Yeah, right? pure savings, like eating nothing but eggs, rice and chicken, like basic, basic stuff. Um, but I want to... You had sold your car. Sold at, my car. Like one point, I was right? riding my bike. I wasn't, yeah. Were, I wasn't you, living the life. You were having meetings at Starbucks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm telling you. Exactly. But I want to... Of course, it's nice that we have this journey that we're on, but we're still scratching the surface of what's possible. But I want to share for people watching that maybe haven't started or maybe are looking to start. I want to, in this video, remove the mystique around a successful entrepreneur because there's a lot of information out there that, oh, if you just do X, Y, and Z, you can become the Two Comma Club award winner. You can become super successful, but there's a lot that you and I have gone through over the past for you five years, me over seven years in my business, five years in your business, five years plus yeah. um, that we can share. Like you mentioned, some of the failures, some of the mistakes that we've made, but also even some of the limiting beliefs that we have on ourselves. that's at this point limited our growth, but now we kind of see what's possible and keep growing from there. Absolutely. And so- so you, you touched on something called two comma clubs. So let's give the, the audience some context mm -hmm. in terms of what that is in regards to Funnel Hacking Live 2023, which is where we're at right now mm -hmm. in Orlando. Yeah. And so it's for making seven figures. So it could be $1 million on the dot, or it can mean $9 million, $999 and whatever, however many okay. cents. Um, you could be that close to making $10 million, but that's a different award that's next level. This one is the Two Comma Club Award for essentially with ClickFunnels. Um, it's an online you know, sales funnel platform for making seven figures in a 12-month time frame with one sales funnel 
that's the criteria to getting the two comma club award. And so I think how many people got it? There was a decent amount. There was a good chunk of people that over, received it. Over 200, I believe is what it, what it, 200. What the number was. But okay. how many people use click funnels? I mean, thousands, I would uh, say like, tens of thousands, probably hundreds, hundreds of, thousands. of thousands. Yeah. 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 Because I, this, Cause it's been around for over a decade. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been around for a decade and I think they said less than 1% of 1% of 1% or some crazy statistic got the award. And so it's definitely a small percentage of people. Yeah. But when you're at this event and there's four or 5,000 people in the room and there's over 200 people in that room that have the receipts, they have the proof, each and every one of these people have generated over seven figures, anywhere between one million and just under $10 million mm -hmm. in a one year period. That alone speaks to the amount of abundance, the amount of opportunity there is just on the planet in terms of what your purpose is, what value do you bring to the marketplace, and how can you get paid abundantly for your skills, gifts, and talents that God gave you, right? Mm -hmm. And so that right there is a, is a huge motivator for anyone watching that is looking to start a business. You have a calling, you've been called, and now you're in the, the season of disappointing, right? When you're called, you're, you're anointed, right? But what comes right after being anointed is the season of disappointing, where it's like, oh my goodness, God called me to be this person, but now it's like I'm failing at the thing I'm trying to do. And it's like, well, that's part of the process, mm -hmm. right? That's part of the process. So we're going to get, we're going to get into that a little bit. And then once you've gone through the, the blood, sweat and tears, then you're in your appointed position where you now have the credibility and the authority. And someone like yourself has been able to generate over seven figures in just a 12 month period. That did not happen in your first year of business. Not even It close. didn't happen no. in your second year. It didn't happen in your third year. It didn't happen in your fourth year. It didn't happen in the fifth year, right? This, this is the first time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So seven years later, like, and I know there's a lot of internet gurus out there that are making millions and millions I of dollars. I guru. Right, yeah, just internet yeah. marketers. Mm -hmm. They're just making millions and millions of dollars in their first year. Mm -hmm. But what they're not often talking about is the eight, nine year stretch that they had to go before they made their millions, mm -hmm. right? So I want to dive into that a little bit for you. So this is your seventh year in business now, mm -hmm. and you just crossed generating seven figures. You've generated seven figures over the, you know, multiple seven figures right. over the last seven years, but this is the first year that you've generated seven figures go into what your business model is today. What do you, what do, you do and who do you serve? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, I want to touch on, we think of leverage as financial leverage, right? Let me use leverage to buy this piece of real estate or I'll use leverage to work with this person or do this or that. But we don't think about it as how can I use leverage in my business to essentially get more for what I put in. I mean, as an example, maybe four years ago, not that long ago, I used to charge, I mean, a lot less than I do now. Let's just say that. Let's not put numbers on it, but a lot less than I do yeah. now. Um, and it's just supply and demand, right? There was decent demand, but not exceptional demand. Um, so essentially for me, looking at leverage, I was putting in the same amount of time in each, let's say, phone call, consultation call to get a client that I am now. But the price point was, of course, much lower. It's a different offer. But essentially now I've just found the right leverage to create the right offer where people look at it as a no brainer, right? I offer an e-commerce service, helping people build a turnkey type of store, a hands-off e-commerce store on Amazon, Walmart, um, even TikTok. They just opened up their shopping platform that should be massive for my clients, should be huge. Wow. Um, but going back to my point, it's about I'm doing the same thing I've been doing for so many years, but I found a way to structure my offer in a way that's more valuable, going to make more money and just overall be more attractive to my ideal client. And so again, I can essentially take even less phone calls, consultation calls than I did four years ago, but make maybe 10 or 20 times the money. And so I know a lot of us think we work hard and I'm sure many people watching this work extremely hard, but I think you have to look at what am I working hard on? 
Like, what is that? You can cut grass with scissors. You can do it. I mean, it eventually will get cut. Mm -hmm. Is that the most efficient way to do it? Absolutely not. Just like your business, you really have to look at your business idea. Is the way I'm approaching this, is my goals, are my goals, and is my time frame, is it realistic? And I don't love the word realistic, but again, a lot of people think, let me launch my business today and make a million dollars in the first 12 months. Versus saying, okay, this year I can make 50,000. Next year I can make 75, then 150, then 300, then a million, right? And so I think you have to look at, again, what leverage you have with your business, but then what's your time horizon, right? right? How long are you really looking at this as an opportunity? Not with what I do, but in general, right? So many people want to go to the gym and spend 30 days working out and have a six pack and look amazing. Um, But that's just not the way it works. Right. If you're obese and you go to the gym for 30 days, you may lose some pounds, but you have a lot of work to do, a lot of probably failing to do, just like Denzel mentioned. And so I think it's right. about looking at it as as long as you're making progress and there's a difference between being busy and being productive. Right. So many of us, when we're starting a business, we're like, oh, I'm working 80 hours a week. I'm so busy. People love saying they're busy. They're busy. They're busy. But it's also known as busy work. Like, oh, I'm in school right now. They're just giving me a bunch of busy work which means like, oh, it's not important work. So in your business, you have to look at what is going to drive my end result. For Denzel, it's making more videos. But if Denzel makes more videos, he gets more views, he gets more subscribers, you grow your business, right? So in my business, if I talk to more people, I have more conversations, I'll get more clients, I'll grow my business. But a lot of us with our companies, we get so distracted. Uh, We were just talking about this earlier today yeah. You can say, oh, I want to make videos or I want to do phone calls, but I have to look in this direction too. And I want my hand in this pot and over here where you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, where that really should be whatever that is for you, getting new clients, marketing, getting your name out there, making YouTube videos, whatever it may be, getting leverage financially, whatever it is. You have to look at that as if I do that in the morning, whatever happens for the rest of the day, I'm going to be successful based on me doing what's important from 9am to 1pm. A lot of people, they do what's important for other people. They're like, oh, my cousin, they asked me to do this thing for them. And I have to pay my credit cards and I have to pay this SunPass invoice or whatever little things add up. And you're like, oh, wow, it's noon and I haven't done anything productive. You've been busy, right? You may need some coffee, you may need some lunch. Um, but you've done nothing to really grow your business long term. And there's a vast difference between, again, being busy and being productive. If you're productive, you don't need to make all the money right away. You're making real progress. If you're being busy, you might look 10 years from now and be in the same place. So again, vast difference between busy and productive. Right. So so talk to us about that first year in business, mm-hmm. right? For you, like what was the what was the revenue and What was your, I would say like some, I guess some mindset. How were you operating? What was your focus? Surviving, (laughs) not thriving. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And the first year of my business. Right. And this year, how, how that shifted Mm. and was it just a matter of, of time? the main thing and i know one of my biggest setbacks or or i wouldn't call it a a total like failure i would say when i first started i had the main thing the main thing was teaching educating coaching consulting on velocity banking help people pay off their debt extremely fast either using the concept or not using the concept right it was you know providing all the different options in terms of how we can eliminate debt as quickly as possible and then what happened was the channel grew really fast and then people started grabbing my attention Mm -hmm. and they were like, hey, we should partner up with this. Hey, we should partner up with this and hey, we should partner up with this. And so I started giving a little time here, a little time there, a little time there. And what can be tricky for those listening that will go this route, sometimes you actually will make a lot of money. So you start making multiple streams of income all coming into one central location, it may work. It may actually work. For me, it actually worked Mm. until it started to plateau. Like it went like this 
and it started to plateau and then it was just like steady growth, right? And I'm realizing now in my in my f- fifth year of business that I need to go back to making videos every single day, pumping out content like we talked about off camera. That's going to be one of my main focuses is delivering the value that my audience wants and then actually asking them what they want to hear, Mm -hmm. what they want to learn from me about how I can continue to provide more value to them and how frequently I provide that value. Right. So that is something that is a is a pivot for me as we get ready to close out 2023 going into 2024. That's my goal Mm -hmm. should be putting out content that is on the main value offer, the main offer that I'm sharing with my audience that they originally came for. And then now they're being fed this, being fed that, this partnership, that partnership, which are all great. They will all provide value to my audience at some point in time. But if I just keep honing in on the main thing, it's gonna actually bring in more people. And then with back end processes, it will it will funnel people into the different offers that like you have and mm-hmm. many other partners I work with. So for you, was it a gradual evolution or was it a like light bulb moment and that led you to hit seven figures? That's a good question. I'd say the first year was about surviving, not thriving, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't even know where you're going. I didn't know how much I was trying to make or what my goal was. I mean, I guess I did put on my phone $150,000 and that was my goal in terms of annual sales. So I'm like, oh, if I do 150,000, I'm going to be rich. Bomb. I'm, I'm a baller, you know, <laughs> which is not to say anything bad about that level of money. But in business, like it seems like a decent amount. But after expenses and yeah. everything, Taxes. it's it's not, I mean, a huge amount. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that was my initial goal. But I had no idea really where I was going. I didn't know how to get clients. I didn't know what I was offering. I didn't know who my target audience was. And it would have been easy to quit. It would have been understandable to quit. But that's the difference between people who do get the award or get the next level award and people who kind of think and they're like, oh, like they're they're doing something different than I am. Like I'm not I don't have that because of this. I'm in a different industry. Right. You know, doesn't you know, that doesn't really work for my business. And I'm not saying that to, again, put them down. I'm just saying it's a negative self coaching, I would say, habit that I have. You have. We all have in a certain area that we kind of just make excuses for ourselves. In terms of, oh, they're big on YouTube because they're talking about this and that's dumb. Or like that doesn't even work. Or, oh, they're making more money than me because their dad started their business or whatever excuse we come up with. But again, it's all negative self-coaching. It's not real. We create it in our head to go to sleep at night and be okay with not reaching our potential, our God-given potential, you know, as you mentioned. And that's where I think over the years, I kind of just understood that life isn't fair and I don't need to look at other companies or other people and track my progress on theirs. I need to track my progress on how much did I make the first year? Right. How much did I make the second year? Yeah. H- how am I doing in the third year? How about the fifth year? How about the sixth year? And then at that point, I look at it and I'm like, wow, okay, I'm making progress. I'm being productive. Absolutely. And that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. And so I, I don't know if it was a huge mindset shift. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think my mindset shifted once I didn't have to worry about my bills. In the beginning, it was just you're surviving, you're scraping by, like you're not really living. I was just surviving at that point. But after a few years, once I kind of got things settled, then I could think more long term. Right. Um, but I'm sure people watching are going to agree. It's hard to think long term when you don't know how you're going to make that next payment or get that next meal or whatever the situation may be. And that's how you and I kind of grew up in those households. And so we're just used to that scarcity but we got out of that. Absolutely. We said that's not not that it's awful or whatever it may be. If that's how you're living, then you can look at it as a step in your process, a phase. But don't think that's your end goal. Because Denzel and I, we could have easily stayed in that spot very easily. Um, but we chose to say, okay, that's our circumstance at this point, right? When we first met, mm-hmm. that's kind of both of our circumstances. That's not going to be us in however many years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, however long it takes. We're making an intentional decision that that's not how we're going to live, however long it took to make that adjustment. So I think over time, that shift happened. It did take time. But of course, yeah, once you start making the money and it just, everything works, it seems like it's instant, but it really is people planting seeds three years ago, two years ago, you know, five years ago. And now it seems like, oh, all of a sudden, everything is working great. But it's really been 
little seeds being planted and little adjustments that's been made um, over the past seven years. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting with some ideas here. And for my moms and dads watching at home, those that have families, those that are, you know, in your 40s, in your 50s, and you're listening to 25 25 Mm -hmm. and 27, Mm -hmm. I'll be 28 in the new year. And you're like, well, well, they have all the time on their hands. You know, I don't have all I don't have all the time in the world or I don't have time. And it's like, well, hopefully I can encourage you. And it may not be from my words or Alex's words, but there are people on the Internet that are your age, 40s, 50s, 60s, that also started much later than we did. And they're actually doing way better than us. They're producing way more today at Funnel Hackers Live, I heard a mom of eight, eight children. She started a YouTube channel 15 years ago from this year, but it was really in the last two or three years is when she really started to hit things off. And you wouldn't believe what she was covering. She was literally just covering how to cook different recipes, different foods, using an air fryer. Really? An air fryer. (laughs) Her name is Kathy Yotter. She has, uh, her YouTube channel is called The Empowered Cook or Empowered Cook, Mm. something like, or Empowered Cook or something like that, right? The picture that she put up on on the template when she was talking, I think the number was 690 plus thousand subscribers. I'm 27, I have 50, thousand mm. 52 something like that fifty thousand ish subscribers alex you've got <laughs> like 715 715 yeah you got the instagram maybe like a couple thousand if you combine all right. the all the platforms mm. but he's doing seven figures i'm at multiple six figures so it's not even about the how many followers you mm. have he's leveraging other people's audiences to deliver his service and offer. I'm creating my own audience and then delivering offers throughout my own audience. And then I also leverage other people's audiences as well. But going back to the Catholic lady, like she's not 27, she's not 37. This is a grown woman, a mom of eight. Mm -hmm. Talk about being busy. Like she literally is busy being busy. And when she's not busy, she's busy. talking eight kids yeah. and a husband mm. right so you, and herself like all 10 people in the house that she has to take care of and look after and somehow she found a way with her camera her phone and like a little tripod and just started recording herself using the air fryer millions of people are now watching her today mm. so hopefully that's encouragement another example more close to home christy van now has over 120 thousand mm-hmm. subscribers last time i checked she's also not 27 also not 37 also not 47 <laughs> right this is also a mom a wife busy she had a career mm-hmm. as well and then she transitions got a family business and somehow found time to create content put out more content than me a 27 year old that you you would think oh you know he He's successful, Alex success because they have the time. They don't have kids. They're not married. But go look at these other case studies that you can literally observe and see, okay, look at this woman. She's she's in her 50s. Look at this man in his 50s. Look at this person in their 60s. And they're doing it and they're making it happen. So I don't know if it's if it has to be a immediate, you know, light bulb switch or if it's a gradual process, whatever it is, as long as you intend to commit to the thing that you've been called to become on this planet and do it even though you're going to be terrible at it because last time i checked you look at every story in the bible all the major characters in the bible none of them were awesome to start out with all of them had a season of disappointing a season where they were not good and they became great over time right so hopefully this has been really really encouraging to you all and i'm just having a blast hanging out with Alex here and just giving you guys some updates. Let's tap into some more, let's tap into the mistakes. So we mm-hmm. talked about the progress so far, seven figures. I should be doing multiple six figures end of this year in 2023. My goal is to get to 500K. I think I might end around probably 400 
I'm not mad. I just set a goal. My actual goal is to do 3.7 million because in 2022, I did 372,000 in revenue. So whatever revenue I do in, in that particular year, my goal is to 10x that number. And it doesn't matter to me how long it, it takes, right? Like I'm not looking at how quickly I need to get there, more so how can I receive the wisdom from God to do the thing that he called me to do on this planet just at scale, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm constantly praying the prayer of, Lord, give me wisdom so that I can do the thing that you called me to do in the first place. You told me this is my purpose. It's It sounds this big, incomprehensible, So I'm going to need the tools. I'm going to need people. I'm going to need resources. I'm going to need leverage to make that happen. Help me succeed in the thing that you want me to succeed in. You're the manufacturer. I'm the product. In order for me to be successful, the manufacturer has to give me the manual so I can succeed. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I rely on my manufacturer, I mean, how can I fail? But if it takes 10 years, are you going to quit? Mm -hmm. Abraham in the Bible was given a promise that he would have a son. God made that promise to him. It took, I think, roughly over 10 years before that ever came to pass. Think about all the times that we think about quitting. I'm sure Abraham wanted to quit multiple times, multiple times over. Thinking about quitting is great, right? It lets you know that you're getting close. I think for me personally, like when I feel like quitting, it's a reminder that I'm receiving resistance because I'm I'm like right there. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm right there. So by default, if I don't quit and I don't compare myself to others, I don't compare myself to Alex. I don't compare myself to, you know, any YouTube channel out there that has more subscribers than me or anyone in my atmosphere that makes more money than me, right? I don't compare myself to, I compare myself to Denzel in 2022. And then the Denzel in 2022 is comparing himself to Denzel in 2021. And as long as I keep competing against him, I I believe that I am unstoppable, unshakable, and will achieve all the things, right? That God has for me, right? And then the things that I just naturally desire that God put in my heart to desire in the first place, right? So feeding into that, some mistakes here along the way we talked about the the gradual growth process and one of the mistakes i mentioned earlier was doing this right multiple things another mistake and i'm still working through it is who we surround ourselves with right i was talking to alex off camera and i was sharing with him some of the people that i choose to spend time with in my life that are just not operating at the at the level that I'm operating at. And it's not my job to want to want it more for them than they want. That's what you had Mm -hmm. said. You're like, you know, they need to want it more than you want it. For them. For them. Yeah. And I can tell you, honestly, I do this with my clients as well, still to this day. And I, I, I have to, you know, detach, but I have clients I work with that are only making 50 grand a year, 60, 70 grand. And I sometimes want it more than they want it. When I'm on the phone call with them, I'm not shouting you out, I'm not calling anybody <laughs> out. This is a healthy way of me talking through mistakes that I'm personally making and how if I don't choose to improve, what's going to happen that inevitably is I'm not going to be able to serve the people that God called me to serve at, an, at, a, at a high level because I'm choosing to spend my time with people that don't want to grow. And it's hard when it's close friends, when it's when it's family, when they're just not growing at the level or at the speed that you're Mm. growing at. Now it's different when, say for example, like us two, like, you know, you're growing at a really fast speed, right? In fact, there was a time where I was like Mm. in in the up. Yeah. And you were just breaking your first six figures and I had already had three... 300k 400k like yeah. already you're like 5x 6x what I, was, I doing. was already locked yeah. in i was mm-hmm. already locked in and then like one day i see this guy like just hammering at, i'm at the at the business and i can tell because i'm an affiliate so i generate income when i bring alex business and he serves those clients he then pays a referral commission to me and that is our business relationship, but it goes way beyond beyond that. We have a, 
a, a true friendship that is rooted in, in faith and integrity and honesty. And we're more than willing to call each other out on things, not in a judgmental way, but rather like just, Denzel, this is what you need to do. Like you need to make videos every single day. Just, just get it done, right? And then I get the resistance. I'm like, he's right. I was doing it. Why did I stop? Right? Like, so this is me saying it again, because I listen to my own content. I'm going to hear myself talk through this, the stress, how long it's taking me to just get through that piece right there. And I think for those who at home watching, especially my audience, moms and dads that I'm, you know, serving even my clients, think about how long it's taking you to get past that obstacle, that, that mistake you keep on making, right? And how we, how we can overcome it, right? So what would be a way if you want to, I want to pass mm -hmm. it to you, if you can identify maybe a mistake you made this year, despite doing seven figures, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're able to look and, and see where, where there were some leaks, some holes that maybe my audience can take away from. Mm -hmm. And if there's any particular move or if it's a prayer or if it's a conversation with a particular person to pivot, not make that same mistake. Mm -hmm. again. I would say you don't need permission to reach your potential. A lot of us think, oh, again, they're doing it. He's doing it. She's doing it. That's deep. But I, that's not for me or I, I'm just not ready for that. And a lot of people, they feel like, oh, I need somebody to tell me that I'm good enough or I'm worth it and I can build that business. And we talk a lot about revenue and sales because it's business is a game and that's how you keep score. Um, but it is, it's just a number at the end of the day. You can make six figures, 100,000 and feel so free, feel so happy. And so again, I don't need to make anybody watching this think you have to make seven figures to have a successful business. Mm -hmm. Success is relative. Again, you can make 50,000 with your business instead of making 50,000 at your job, but love what you're doing. Right, love the clients, love the process, and maybe you don't need to grow beyond that. Right, but I think you don't need permission from some magical figure to say, you know what, I want to make a million dollars with my business. Like, there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of people think money's evil, and I don't need a lot of money. Because you and I can agree, if you grow up struggling in that type of mindset, in that type of household, you think, okay, well, this is how life works. We just struggle. Paycheck to paycheck, that's how you're supposed to live. Or that's how at least I'm supposed to live, right? The rich people, they have some secret. Like they're doing something differently. Mm -hmm. They're not doing anything differently. It's just they're not okay with that. And they make, as I mentioned earlier, the distinct choice that I have to get out of my situation. Even if it takes five years, 10 years, 20 years, I'm being intentional about where I want to go. And even if I don't have the GPS, I'm going to figure out a way to get the steps on how to get to that point. And so I think, as I mentioned, a lot of people think, oh, but I need somebody to like, I guess, tell me that I'm good enough to make a million dollars. And if you want this to be your confirmation, then take it. Mm -hmm. But you don't need me to tell you. You don't need Denzel to tell you because it's out there. There's trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And there's no reason why you can't get some of that. And I mean, some, even a seven figure business is not 1% of 1% of 1% of 1%. And probably another 1%, like $1 million as a business is not going to affect the United States economy. And I say that in a literal way because a lot of people think it would. Like, oh, there's so much competition on YouTube, on e-commerce, online, on Amazon, whatever your business idea is, there's too much competition. I missed out on the, the boom. That's not the case. No, it's just thinking too small. And I think that's also my mistake that I've made, not just this year, but in the past, I didn't give myself permission to think big. And so I didn't have enough audacity to think, okay, well, if they're making a million dollars, why can't I? But there's no logical reason why I can't or you can't or you can't. It's just, again, negative self-belief, negative self-coaching. And we make up reasons why I'm sure somebody's going to watch this and be like, oh, but a Alex is this or Denzel is that. They started when they're young or they're going to come up with some excuse and maybe even leave a comment and that's fine. But for those looking to grow... It's something where we're not special people. Like we don't come from well-off families that had connections and existing businesses. We didn't know what we were doing. We just had dinner. We didn't know what we were doing when we started out. We were just trying. We were figuring things out and we had the right intentions. We had the right honesty, integrity and everything along those lines. Um, and it just worked out. I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, I'm Puerto Rican, Colombian, don't even speak that much Spanish, like, 
grew up in Queens, single mom, paycheck to paycheck, negative paycheck to negative paycheck, in debt your whole life. Nobody is saying anything like I'm I'm five eight, one fifty, like I got a big forehead. <laughs> I mean, I think we're matching on the forehead yeah, side of things. Yeah. At least we're matching right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, name all of the things. No, n- didn't go to college. Average 3.0, 3.1, 3.2-ish. G- I think my highest GPA was like maybe 3.4, 3.5. ABC mm-hmm. student. Not that athletic. Not that talented. I mean, keep going down the list. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know how to do math that well. <laughs> And that is a big mistake. I, I, I make so many case study videos and I, I literally have a playlist of videos where I literally say, these are all the videos I made mistakes on. <laughs> I don't take them down. Mm-hmm. I used to. And then I told myself, no, people need to watch me fail. People need to see the mistakes and to know that I'm not perfect. I will mess up. People are going to work with me. I'm going to run numbers and... I'm going to make a mistake, even with a calculator, even with a software, we're going to make mistakes. Mistakes will be made. That's part of being hu- part of being human, right? Presidents, prime ministers, kings, governors, politicians, lawmakers. You've got judges that have made mistakes and put people in prison and they spend their whole lives in prison knowing they're innocent. And then decades later, they're proven innocent and released. That's a mistake that costs somebody an entire life. You know, mistakes can cause people to literally die. So it can go to that far an extent, or it can just be like, hey, I made a mistake. I made this video. I thought it was one thing. I I didn't properly run the math or I let my emotions get in the way. Made a mistake. But here I am not giving up. I'm coming back. I have a burning desire to win. I have a burning desire to compete against myself where I say, okay, Denzel messed up five, 10 times in my business in 2022. But in 2023, I only messed up six times, you know, and then 2024, I get it down to three, 2025. Oh shoot. It went back up again <laughs> to five, but I'm not making the the same mistakes over mm-hmm. and over again. In regards to math, I feel like that's something that it's one of those things, like, especially if you're not that good at math, you, I don't know how you get out of not consistently making mistakes, even with softwares, even with calculators, like mistakes will be made, but you, but if we can put some parameters in place to do like double, triple, quadruple checking of the math, then that's going to help, you know, reduce the amount of times that you do mess up. So I don't even think the goal is to not make mistakes. I think the goal is what can we learn from those mistakes, from those failures, to keep pressing forward. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with that? Maybe it's Tom Brady makes mistakes. I mean, he's thrown many interceptions. Michael Jordan has missed many shots. That's a technically a mistake, but they're that so they, successful that they because making. that yeah. they keep making, right? Probably against maybe the same players or the same teams, but they keep trying, right? They keep moving forward. They keep making progress. They don't quit. I think if you don't want to make mistakes, don't try. <laughs> Because if you don't actually put yourself out there, then you're staying in your nice, cushy comfort zone and you're comfortable. You're safe. I, I, I bet it's comfortable in that suit. It is right a little now. comfortable in this suit. Shout out to Mas- Massimo <laughs> down in Brickle, Miami. Mm-hmm. Check him so out. So <laughs> when you're safe and you're comfortable, you can't make mistakes because you're not outside your comfort zone. You're not taking action or pulling the trigger um, or doing anything different. Right, and that's where growth happens. Whether it's with your business, your health, your finances, relationship, whatever it may be, if you're doing things differently, if you're outside your comfort zone, that's where good things can happen. Or if mistakes happen, you can learn from them. You can make adjustments, like Denzel said, and over time make further progress. A lot of people, they, I, I don't like to use the word arena. I know, like people like to say, I'm in the arena with my business, like the whole. I think it's the Theodore like, Roosevelt quote. Okay. Or the whole like how he's like, oh, I'm in the arena. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of that because it's like, we're not warriors at the end of the day. <laughs> I'll show you the quote after, but okay. I'm sure many people watching this, they know the, the man in the arena poem. Hmm. We're like, I don't go so far to say that, but of course, if you're taking action, you're putting yourself out there, um, you're doing the work, you're doing your best and that's all you can ask for. I like that. I like that. Now to just take things a little bit, lighter Mm -hmm. here in regards to running a multiple six 
figure business now entering a, a seven figure business and and beyond moving forward as that's going on talk to me about how you're managing this is something that we did cover in the last collaboration we did together a couple months back was trying to find that balance in how much we put into our business how much we work in the business how much we dedicate towards family and friends how much time we dedicate towards god prayer personal time meditation how much time we spend towards our our partners mm -hmm. you know the people that we want to do life with right any new things come up since the last time we talked i remember specifically if i were to you know look back at the video we talked about the the work-life balance kind mm -hmm. of a thing right so as we get ready to close out here, I just want to touch on that piece right there. Like mm -hmm. if there's anything new coming up or, and you know, how things are going on the personal side, as you're going to business, do certain areas suffer, you know, or is it kind of all coming together in a nice, unique way? Mm -hmm. I want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah. So I think as I've grown my company, at first it was just me. So if I had a slow month, it's fine. I'll just take home a little less money. But now I have staff and employees and a whole team that helps me manage my clients. So now it's added more stress as I've scaled. Because now I'm like, oh, if I have a bad month, I still got to pay them. Like they're getting the same exact money. Right. Right. And so that's added that stress. Set, set pay. They're, they're right. set. You know, I'm not set. <laughs> so that's where that's added a pretty good amount of stress. Because even when I'm in the shower, I'm just... I'm doing everyday things. I'm thinking like, hmm, like what, what, where have I not looked? Like what door have, have I not opened? Or what, like, have I not peeked around that corner? Like what's behind that corner? Is it good or bad? That's where I've seen the shift where I have to make time where I'm not thinking about the business. So I have to find things with my girlfriend where we're just doing something that takes my mind off of it. Because if my mind is empty, it will fill up with not negative things. It'll also look at growth and what's possible and where am I going to be in 10 years, you know? But I think it's different when you have, I'm sure it's like living single versus having a family to feed. The stress level is different because you're like, oh, like not only if I fail, would it affect me, but it would affect people that believe in me and relied on me to get started, you know? And so I think that's been a big shift in that. And it's helped because I saw things even 12 months ago and I planted seeds and they're working out right now. Um, but it does become a point where it's like maybe scaling has a certain limit. Like I don't need to scale this to nine figures or even eight figures. Like who knows what that point is for me? I don't know yet. But I think, yeah, there's definitely a fine line between scaling just to scale, just to scale. Right? Right. Just to make more money, to make more money, to make more money. Mm -hmm. Where at that point, it would honestly have diminishing returns. I'm not there yet, not even close. Right. But I do see kind of hints of even in three years, I could definitely see myself not slowing the business down, but maybe shifting it to be a little more selective and not as just trying to grow, 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 because it's hard to just constantly grow right. and be in that mindset. It is. Yeah. So living intentionally, mm -hmm. right? And if being intentional means, hey, I want to spend more time on, you know, with your, with your girlfriend to blossom that, to really grow that, you know, invest time there to get it to a certain point where you say, okay, now I need to bring my business up with that. Okay. Now I need to bring certain relationships, you know, there's, there's people I just stopped hanging out with that I really enjoyed mm -hmm. with, but you know, I want to, you know, give them some more time. So finding that line is no easy thing. That's another hard process of, of life there. I'm not saying I have the answers, nor am I an expert. This is why I just, you know, try to have conversations with other people and just have them open up. Alex was able to open up with us here today. I really appreciate it, bro. And we're going to get ready for the next day for Funnel Hackers. And I do recommend this event, coming to this event at least one time to get around people that are just operating at levels you've never seen. Like I'm small potatoes. And when I walk in that room, I'm like, oh my goodness, like these people are productive. Mm -hmm. It's so cool to just see how productive others are. And I'm like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I think I can do that. You know, I believe I can do that. It's going to take time. Yeah. Let me put in the work. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, Denzel Rodriguez here, personal finance geek, Alex Albaran, helping you out with your e-commerce and stores and marketing and even some coaching as mm -hmm. well. I will have the link below to reach out to him. If anybody wants to have a conversation, you can email me directly. Any thoughts, 
If you enjoyed this, comment below. Let me know your personal testimony working with Alex, if you're a client or myself, what you've been able to gain over the years watching this channel. So for those who are brand new can see what others have, have to say about us and their experience. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.